It is the first episode of All Sports in the year 2015. And of course, if we should turn our books back to the year that had just passed in terms of uh, sports activities, we must give kudos to the Nigerian women folk. Of course, at the Commonwealth Games, it was a brilliant show for Nigeria in athletics as Blessing Okagbari spearheaded the team that brought some very positive results uh, to Nigeria. And in women's football, a certain Azizat Oshola ensured that Nigeria got to the final and of course uh, picked the silver medal at the FIFA World Under-20 Women's Championship in Canada. And to Capital, the Super Falcons uh, retained their African title at the African Women's Championship in Namibia. So it's a year that we must give to the women for recording some major achievements uh, for Nigeria in sports, in spite of the fact that the Super Eagles uh, failed to qualify Nigeria for the Africa Cup of Nations that will kick off uh, in a few weeks' time. Of course, we look forward to the first major event in the year 2015, and that has to do with the African Footballer of the Year, or the CAF Player of the Year, which comes up on Thursday here in Lagos. And we hope Vincent Iyama might just sneak through uh, to get that title after many years of absence when it comes to Nigeria picking up that title. Or will it go to Yaya Touré? We just keep our fingers crossed and wait for that colorful award ceremony here in Lagos on Thursday. It is hot spots and there's so much to savour on the programme this Saturday. spend your Christmas evening, Christmas day, but for you to have, you know, accepted our invitation mm -hmm. you know, to our home, we really say thank you. Thank you again to my colleagues, especially at um, uh, Hotspots before, now HS Media. Now the evolution of HS Media is simple. Hotspots has been a platform for 18, all of 18 years. And then finally we are getting to some level 
Because as you know, there is digitization coming to Nigeria by June 17, television Nigeria will not be the same again. Am I right? By 17th of June, it won't be the same again. And as a player in that industry for so long, we have no choice but to also um, uh, 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 play along, and that's what we have done. Uh, HS Media has evolved from hotspots to hotspots, and there are five different business units, as you find in that group in your hand, that we will be playing at. Listen, it is just a minimum of five, because as as um, we have tried to do, talking about what God Almighty is doing for us, somewhere if you some five ten kilometers, some five ten minutes drive from here, we don't have opportunities to do more. Now to the main issue on hot sports today. Uh, it is a new year, a new year of prospect when it comes to sports. How can we take advantage of the new calendar year in sports? And at the end of the day, just coast home with some very, very uh, delightful results for Nigerian sports fans. On this special interview with the President General of the Nigerian Football and Other Sports Supporters Club, Dr. Rafiul Ladikbo, we do a kind of reflection on uh, sports activities in the year that has just passed and the future of Nigerian football in 2015. Enjoy it. Sometimes life can be very boring. But in the MTN season of surprises, you get a special smartphone plan that gives you a whopping 4.5 gigabytes at only 2,500 Naira, so you can browse more, chat more, tweet more, and upload those unforgettable moments of the season. Text 120 to 131 now to activate your smartphone bundle or dial star 123 hash for more options. MTN, everywhere you go. I know as someone who always wants to be where the action is, Nigeria's failure to qualify for the Nations Cup is really a big setback for you. Yes, it is. My members worldwide are not happy. And the Super Eagles will be missing out of the Cup of Nations 2015, particularly when we won the last edition and we are supposed to be defending the championship. And when it mattered most, we fumbled. We went, we had it rough, we had two matches to go believing that if we go to Congo and we win in Congo, we will certainly qualify. A lot of people believe that we cannot go to Congo and win, but what happened? We went to Congo, we won two goals to nothing. Getting back home here to play the last match. And what did we need? We needed just one goal. We fumbled, fumbled and fumbled when it mattered most. We played, we had chances, we had the opportunity to wrap up the game in the very first half of the match. Unfortunately, our players played like if they had nothing at stake and they missed all the chances. So it's a very sad thing for us. It's a very sad thing for all members of the supporters club because that is where we are supposed to showcase our love, our passion, for the game of football, our patriotism towards Nigeria. Don't be surprised that this is costing us a lot of money because we have put in place certain things that we have prepared with our money, hoping to take them to Equatorial Guinea and sell, and it's to make some money 
into the boss of the club. What happens? We're not going to have it sold. We're going, they're useless now. Because millions of fans all around the world who would have come to, to Equatorial Guinea to watch the Super Eagles won't be there to see them. So if we are taking those things there, we will pay for taking them there by way of paying effort. And we always we are going to bring them back because there will be nobody to buy. It's a very sad thing for Nigeria. It's a very sad thing for members of the supporters club. And we pray fervently that we do not want to see situations like this in the nearest future. How would you look at Nigerian football in 2014? Uh, satisfactory? No. It's not satisfactory. Before we went to the World, World Cup, we were very, very optimistic. And we all believed that we would go to Brazil and not make the number, give a very good account of ourselves. In fact, before we left, we were of the opinion that the Super Eagles will we get minimally to the semi-final stage. Unfortunately, that never happened. We found it difficult, very tough, before we could even get into the second round. And getting to the second round, what happened? We were shown the way out. And then we came back, dejected, disappointed. We also had the opportunity to write to rewrite the history and put Nigeria's name in the class and the care of those people that have played in the quarterfinal. Unfortunately, that never happened. And this was due to what I called inexperience, lack of discipline, lack of commitment, and insensitivity on some people's part. Because the World Cup is not an experiment. It is a game where you expect to put the best. And then the best of you has to play alongside other countries of the world. Well, what happened? We didn't do nothing. I said it. Over 30% of those who went to the World Cup were not supposed to be there. I mean, the players were not supposed to be there. This club spent 189 million naira of our hand and money to go to Brazil in order to go and support them. They did not attach any importance to that. I have men of 70, 80 years, have lawyers, doctors, engineers, even motor boys who are members of the club who traveled from Nigeria. About 250 of us officially traveled from Nigeria to Brazil. There were other members from other countries of the world. It cost us a lot of money. We were traveling from Sao Paulo to Cueva, to Curitiba, to Brasilia, and to Porto Alegre. There were some journeys we made, 37 hours to go, and 37 hours to come back. Some 24 hours to go there, and 24 hours to come back. 18 hours to go, 18 hours to come back. The, the list was seven hours to go, seven hours to come back. So within two weeks, um, 10 days, we went over 200 kilometers on road. And then here, are, here were some players who would collect money. But what happened? They failed. Most of us were crying when we lost to, 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 to France. And we knew what happened. The, the bench of the French team studied our team very well and saw that the engine room was a midfield. And what did they do? They took out Onasi. And that paved, paved way for them. And they scored us two quick goals within 20 minutes. And that was how we failed to cross into the quarterfinal. So it was not a good year for us. When you talk of football at the highest level, we did not go beyond the second round in the World Cup. We did not also qualify for the African Cup of Nations. And that, that should be the best. That is the ultimate when you talk of football. And so if we did not qualify for this too, I don't think we should be happy 
to say we have done something well. But then we take, take solace in the fact that our female team, the, the, the two teams, the Falconets and the Falcons, uh, did well. The Falconets did well in the World Cup, winning silver. Then the Falcons won the African Women's Championship. And then we now have, well, say about 40% good, 60% not so good. Do you think the administrative problems in the football house contributed to the poor performance of the Super Eagles? Certainly, yes. You cannot run football in crisis. You cannot achieve anything when you are fighting yourself. A house that is divided against itself cannot stand. That lingering crisis in the Nigerian Football Federation, particularly the leadership, contributed so much to our undoing. How do you describe it? When from the beginning of the year we have been engaged in fighting, in in house, fighting ourselves, A will be the president, B will be, Z will be. You never knew who could be. It's fight, 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 fight every day. That contributed so much. Are you, are you not aware that we were nearly banned by FIFA because of this crisis? It took some of us a lot of efforts, courage and prayers before FIFA could not ban us. And even at the end, look at what has happened to us. I think that was very, very contributory to what happened. And with crisis, nobody can achieve any meaningful development in any sphere of life. So no matter what it is, that crisis contributed to our undoing. What's your take on the Super Eagles head coach, Stephen Keshe? My statement is this. When we lost that opportunity, I said, Keshe has to go. But we have seen the turnaround of events. And the question now is this. If we said Keshi failed and he has to go, who are we bringing in? Are we ready to employ a world class coach? Can we pay the world class coach who will come and stay here? What I want us to do now is for the Nigeria Football Federation to send Stephen Keshi and other technical men for courses since we want to have our own as a coach. Keshi needs assistance. And this, the assistance is by the NFF helping him to go out there and study. Be part of those teams that are doing well. Two, three months rigorous coaching course. We give him uh, a better place. We put him on another pedestal. We cannot continue to do it this way. If we want Keshi to remain as government wants, let government empower Keshi. Let government give the NFF the opportunity and the fund to send Keshi and the other people, the other coaches for training. Football is not static. Football moves every day. You need to gather more experience to be able to think. I think the Super Eagles is a big team. Keshi achieved the feat he achieved in South Africa winning the Cup of Nations. But don't you think he needs more, more experience, more exposure? He needs to be capable to be able to do much more. So if government wants Keshi to stay, Government should make it possible for the NFF to send Keshi for training so that by the time he comes back, he would have gathered a better experience to think at the Super Eagles. Not only him, other Nigerian coaches, because if we believe in this country, fine. But let us do what is, is supposed to be done to be able to get what we want. A situation where we say Keshi should stay and we are not helping him, we are not assisting him, to go and train, my brother, would, it's not going to help us. Thank God we are not going to the Cup of Nations. We have ample time now to be able to send Coach uh, Keshi 
and other coaches to some clubs abroad to, to train with them two, three months and let them come back and impact whatever they have learned over there into the players. I think that will help us. Now that the Super Eagles will not be uh, in the Nations Cup, will the supporters club just be folding its hands and just be looking from the far rear? Nigerians don't know what we have missed. Let the Cup of Nations start in Equatorial Guinea. That is when they would actually realize what pain it will be for us to start watching other countries of Africa playing at that championship and the Super Eagles will not be there. The supporters club, like I said at the beginning, were not happy. But we are not going to fold our hands. We have other competitions. The Falcons will be going to Canada. We'll be with them. The under-23 national, national team is there. We also support them. But beyond that, myself, as the president of the African Football and Other Sports Supporters Union, we take some Afosu members to Equatorial Guinea to at least go there and help complement the efforts of CAF by way of stamping out hooliganism and violence from Africa's football. In spite of all the problems encountered in football last year, uh, is there a bright future for Nigerian football? 2015 can be bright, can be better, if only we do the right thing. And the right things we've got to do, one of them is what I've just said. We are now in December 2014. Let government call the NFF, give them funds to send cash and his crew for coaching courses. I'm happy the Pinnick led uh, board have started sending referees on courses that we add more to our our credentials. But if Kagis should still stay with that level he has now, I don't think there's anything good in that. Let government send him on training course and let him come back. And then let us also not forget that the crop of players that played in the Super Eagles up to now should not be the only ones to represent us in 2015. There will be qualifiers and there should be friendly matches. Let us look inwards. We have players in the league who we can bring into the Super Eagles and train. We have players, young players around the world now, 20, 22, 23 players around the world. Even we have somebody who is less than 20 who is playing for Man City. We have players like that. Let's get them. And I'm happy with the, with the program of Samson CSC uh, team. He's, uh, he's bringing the under 23 team together. And if we can figure out those good ones amongst them, let us start building them for the super egos of the future. Once we are able to do that, 2015 can be better. But I tell you, anything short of our going back to the basis to look at how we failed, what made us to fail, and correct those things, 2015, I don't pray, will be another disaster. But if we do, go look at what has happened to us, we look at why we failed, and what we can do to remedy it, I think the future will be better. Well, as we custom on Hot Spots today, the very first episode for the year, 2015, it is a very big sports calendar uh, for Nigeria. Can we come out with a bountiful harvest at the end of the day? Uh, we wait to see. Of course, our preparations should be more pragmatic to ensure a productive result at the end of the day. That is how far we can go on Hot Spots uh, for this new year, 2015. We'll see you again next Saturday.